Welcome back to Justice League Odyssey, right here at Comic Storian. This is where we take your favorite combo books, we break them down into digestible bites, and I read them back to you in a dramatic fashion, allowing you to catch up on a great synopsis, and then you can go out and buy the next issues yourself. Justice League Odyssey is a storyline that came out a couple of years ago and basically follows a group of spacefaring Justice League members. This includes Cyborg, Starfire, Jessica Cruz, Green Lantern, and Azriel, of all people. When we last left off at issue 5, we discovered that Darkseid had summoned the four of them to the Ghost Sector, an area where all of the planets that Brainiac had stolen have been set free. But there's no law, there's no order, because there's just a bunch of random planets that have been thrown out into space. But we discovered that Darkseid's secret plan is to rebuild Apocalypse with tech that he had hidden in the Ghost Sector. Now it's time to see what's gonna happen next. When we last left off, Starfire said with her glowing hands that she wanted Darkseid to finally answer all the questions, explain everything. He's not going to lie to them anymore. So after they secured Darkseid, he said that this is foolish, but Cyborg tells him that he respectfully disagrees. First things first, the Ghost Sector has the raw materials to build a new apocalypse. That's why the Kaluans hid these worlds to stop Darkseid. Darkseid tells him, You interpreted the data incorrectly. I seek nothing but the preservation of life itself. Well, yes, I was seeking to restore my power to be Darkseid again. There is a more. I am a cosmic force. I am order amid chaos. I shall show you. What I attempted to manifest is a device, not a weapon. It is called the Other Box. It will reveal through quantum imaging what your kind calls the Big Picture. As a dark side summons the other box, images of horror and catastrophes not yet seen begin to be shown. Beings that they don't know yet are peering in from the near future with plans of their own. Secrets of Universal Armageddon that Darkseid's long-awaited truth is finally unlocking. The heroes are stunned. Darkseid goes on stating that the Source Wall has fallen. The Fourth Age has ended. Apocalypse and New Genesis are no more. The death spiral of the multiverse has begun. Long ago, his culture predicted this event, a final darkness, and he spent a millennia preparing contingency plans to defy it, and they must now be enacted without delay. That is why he brought the three of them to the ghost sector. It and they are vital parts of his plan. Their fates have been prepared by the hypertime planning of the other box. Cyborg, the technological transmuter. Starfire, the fire of creation. And Azriel, the voice that binds. The other box reached through hypertime to establish their myths across the worlds of the ghost sector. Laid the foundations of their godhood. Azriel asks why, and then the projections change again into something else, with Darkseid stating, Because you were chosen to undertake this task and work by my side, completing and activating Subacore. I must become a true cosmic being again. Only at full power can I operate the Subacore. Cyborg stops him. That's what exactly? A new apocalypse? And Darkseid tells him, No, it is an ark, a lifeboat. In your vernacular, a panic room to protect those from the source wall disaster. This is the new god's contingency against the death of the multiverse. The worlds of the ghost sector have been seeded with relics akin to the other box in the multiversal key, which can combine to activate Sepulchre, a bastion to protect life from a source dead nation. You must help me find these relics. I am weak, too hurt. There is no time to waste. Jessica yells, that's bull. This isn't about saving anyone but yourself. And Darkseid tells her, that is untrue. Only I can do this. Nothing can be saved without Darkseid. Life needs me. The source wall collapses an unimaginable catastrophe. Most of the multiverse will not survive. Sepulchre will. Sepulchre will protect the ghost sector. There alone, life will survive. Thus, life will prevail even after the multiverse ends. Cyborg tells him, that's not good enough. We're not saving ourselves and watching the rest of creation die. We have to do more. And Starfire tells him, but it is a start. We can save the ghost sector, a sector that we doomed. And if we do that, it is a start. And if we could save some, we could find a way to save the rest, right? Darkseid tells her, without Simple Core active, the ghost sector dies. Then they will not be alive to save anything else. Jessica yells, nope, no way. Why would you have any interest in saving life? Darkseid continues, 
Because without life, then I am nothing. My power is meaningless without anything upon which to exert it. This situation is far beyond your feeble notions of heroes and village. Your kind has done as much as I ever have to damage the multiverse and weaken it. You broke the source wall! It is time for you to make amends. There is still time. And it is time for me to be dark side and do what only I can do. A feat beyond even the greatest of your infamous breed. After a few moments of silence, Starfire asks, What do you need from us? Cyborg asks, what is she even thinking? And Darkseid says that they must collect the remaining relics. He is unable to accomplish that task alone. So Cyborg asks, you don't want to help him, do you? But Starfire says that she doesn't trust him, nor will she ever. But if there is a technology here that can provide salvation for life and he can lead them to it, then they need to take that chance. At that moment, the projections shatter and Darkseid shouts for them to release him. They must leave this black rock and begin their work at once. They cannot be detained by. But at that moment, out of the sky, the Tamarind grab troops and Rapture with his followers begin to descend from the skies in a full-on assault. Everyone quickly gets into defensive positions with Darkseid yelling to free him. They cannot do this without him and they cannot survive without him. Just then, a stray blast hits Darkseid's restraints, setting him free. Cyborg runs over to try and stop him, but the other box activates and the two boom tube away. Starfire yells, asking where Cyborg went, and Jessica says that he just vanished! We have to get out of here now, Starfire! Azrael asks, These are my worshippers? Don't they know me? Rapture leaps into the air, stating that they know who they are. Who they all are. Blackfire then says that they are the old gods, the false gods, the destroyers, the instruments of Darkseid. And while the armies close in, Azrael tells himself, I must know myself. I must find the strength from within, where I've always felt it. Have faith and speak my truth. With one final slash, he yells out, Stop! Cease! You will cease this! With a commanding tone. You will stop! We are not your foes! The return of the old gods has inflamed the ghost sector, yet it was meant to bring peace. Soon everyone, the Tamarins and the Azraelites alike, stop upon hearing Azrael speak. And as Starfire helps Jessica up, she asks if this is him. She can feel the power of his words. Is this the voice that binds? Meanwhile, over on Apocrypha, Cyborg falls out of the portal, but he doesn't see Darkseid. Soon the mother box inside of Cyborg begins to ping, and as Cyborg follows the signal, he sees a temple with the Omega symbol on it. Cyborg scoffs, stating that there is no question who built that but it must have been built years ago. He walks up the stairs into a dimly lit stone hall asking, yelling, show yourself, I'm not playing your games. As Cyborg turns on his chest light, he sees several giant bugs, all infected with Brainiac's tech that state, deny dark side, prevent sepulchre. Meanwhile, back on the battlefield, everyone including Blackfire begins to kneel before Azrael yelling, why are we bowing? This is a trick. She then launches herself forward to an attack, and as she gets close, Azrael tells her, Be calm, Blackfire. With no will of her own, she kneels before him, stating, You lie! You lie! Jessica then says that she isn't complaining since, you know, they're alive. But how are you doing this, Azrael? Azrael tells her that he may have always been able to do this. He just never had enough faith in himself before to speak the truth. Rapture asks, What is that truth, Lord Azrael? Speak it, so that we may know it. Azrael turns back to see those kneeling, and he states, You have all believed yourselves to be trapped in this ghost sector, shut off from the outer reality. But in truth, this place is a place of sanctuary, the last stronghold of creation. Doom comes to the universe. All will end, and here alone, life may prevail. Go forth from here and fight for peace. Defend this sector from the harbingers of the Armageddon, from the demon forces of the multiverse, from the carrion kind that gather to feast upon the universal destruction, from those who come to tear down our walls and leave us defenseless! Rapture says that these deeds will be done in his name. Azraelite and Tamarin alone will stand together. Prepare the warships for departure. Starfire then goes over to Blackfire, stating that Azrael's words seem to have reached her. She was so blinded by anger, but now they can work together too. Blackfire yells as she cries out that she does not know why she bowed. His words seem to make sense, but she had no choice. Can't she see? He's dark sized apostle, a manufactured god. Starfire says that they're trying to help people. As Azrael said, Blackfire then activates her teleporter, asking, So he's your master now? I weep for you all and will not be a part of this. Goodbye, sister. 
Meanwhile, back on Apocrypha, Cyborg begins to fend off the alien bugs while his mother box begins to ping in the direction of something. The aliens quickly begin to overtake him, but then Cyborg releases his shield, blasting the aliens back, yelling, Get these things off of me! As he flies up, he turns back, unloading his payload, giving himself time to follow the signal. The pings begin to become more rapid, and as Cyborg scans the area, he sees a relic just below his feet, and he begins to carve it out. More aliens appear, so Cyborg puts up a shield, focusing on extracting the relic. As he looks back, he notices the creatures all merging together, and a giant beast stands up before him. It slams down on his shield, so Cyborg stating that this won't hold for long. We need to hurry! As the beast punches down, it states, Extreme measures required. Detonation systems enabled. Antimatter bomb will annihilate this site in 10 seconds. Once the hole is finished, Cyborg quickly reaches in for the relic with a massive zoom as a pillar of red light explodes. As the smoke clears, Cyborg floats, shielded by the relic, stating that he understands now. He sees it. There's no time to waste. That's why Darkseid took off and left him. He trusted him. A few moments later, Cyborg opens up another boom tube, pulling out the skull ship, and he climbs aboard, telling everyone that he's sorry for the turbulence. The relic that he just picked up seemed to have boosted his mother box. It looks like he can now generate limited boom tubes. Basically, accessing the data network connected all the relics, which means that this trip is a little cruder and more painful for organic forms. Jessica looks at him and tells him, you have active boom tube capabilities. Then we can just get out of here, right? Cyborg says that he's afraid not. He can't take them past the Maelstrom. Just relic to relic inside of the sector. That is exactly what they need. It's good to see you, friend. And you brought us a relic that forms a key to all others of its kind. We must examine it further. Cyborg last stating that it sounds like they all presume Darkseid's plan to be sound. Collecting the relics, completing Sepulchre. Starfire interrupts him yelling, Of course it's sound! The stakes could not be higher, Cyborg! Azrael walks off of the relic, stating that he will extract the coordinates for the next relic and set the ship's navigation for that source. Cyborg then tells them that he has been a terrible leader, but he's going to make amends. What Darkseid told them is correct. Sepulchre is their only hope for preservation of the entire universal life. This is why they will collect the relics and then decide if they're going to hand those powers to Darkseid. He's only going to use them for his own purposes. Starfire says that they would betray him. And Cyborg says, why not? He's tricked us every step of the way. We can't be sure what his ultimate goal is yet. Azrael says, of course. You are a leader after all, Cyborg. But as Starfire and Azrael walk off, Jessica whispers to Cyborg that she's worried about Azrael and Starfire. They both seem... Cyborg tells her it's okay. They've got the edge now. They've got this. And as he turns back to head to the group... Jessica whispers to her ring, analyze power reserves needed to restrain and take down Azrael, Starfire, and Cyborg. Our spacefaring odyssey is going to be continuing right here at Comic Story and every Sunday moving forward. I apologize for missing last week. Simply put, I got sick the whole week before, so I just I couldn't get it done in time, guys. But we are back on track, and here you go. I hope you guys are as excited about this as we are. We love doing these series. I love anything involving the Green Lanterns, so of course we want to bring this to you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this. I'm not forcing you to do anything, and if you want to show a little extra support and get early access to some of our projects and get unedited versions of our podcast, please Please consider going to our Patreon, patreon.com slash comicstorian. Thank you guys so much for your continued support, and I will see you next time right here.